Hello guys, welcome to a video from Skahoy Innovation Lab. And I'm Casper. I'm a CEO, founder and chief designer of Skahoy. And Innovation Lab is a place where I do all the stuff that I'm crazy about. Love doing coding, technology, and I'm sharing tips and tricks with you guys. So uh, in this video, we'll be looking even deeper into the TCP device core. It has been covered in a different video, so please go watch that for an introduction. But basically, the TCP device core allows you to send arbitrary TCP strings or byte sequences over to some arbitrary device that is a TCP server. That could be, say, a Rostock uh, device. You connect to that, you send over some strings with hex codes or, or ASCII or, or bytes, and it will do something. And if you want to do that in some arbitrary way, then this is the video for you. In this video, we'll cover faders and encoders. In the first video, we covered buttons and the overall setup. So we are looking at a situation where we want to use a waveboard. So I've set up an emulated waveboard. So I have no physical panels with me today, but this is just as good. Actually, you can even see that the emulator is emulating the sleep screen. So it's pretty much fun uh, sitting with the emulation because that gives you access to all Skyhawk panels that exist, really. I, let me just quickly show you what I'm talking about. I have the emulator running from uh, in here. If I go to raw panel dummies, which is the name of that application, you can download that from our GitHub repository. Then uh, if you started with a command like list, uh, if you started, you wouldn't start it right from the source code as I'm doing here, but you would uh, just have a binary file and then you would add dash list. You see, this is all the panels that Skyhawk has and you can then choose any variant, any panel and open up like that. So I'll type in panel and I will take waveboard v2, paste in here, execute that and it's going to open up a web browser for me right there the same tab as I already had. But here you go. This is our emulated waveboard panel. Now, the blue pill that we're working with today is this little device, blue pill server. And it has the same technology as our blue pill inside devices. So if you buy a Skyhawk controller today, it's very likely that it has this technology inside of it. The blue pill server is great for a number of reasons. First of all, we have a, a number of standalone applications and more are coming that are going to do great stuff for you. Like um, we, we, I'm, I'm working on something that will give you easy access to all our device cores using a TCP interface. It can also be, hey, the, the uh, Stream Deck X panel where you can connect the Stream Deck to this uh, port and then it will make it a raw panel on your network that you can access over TCP. So it can do a lot of cool things, including connecting to Unisketch panels, which are the uh, products that we have been selling for a decade. And they are absolutely compatible and uh, well working with the Blue Pill. So the Blue Pill is that device. It has this web interface you're looking at right here. And I just started a new project. So we are going from here by first adding a device. And the device we'll add is the TCP uh, device core that is right here. We set that up and I want to have it connect to my laptop. And that's because on my laptop, I have another little cool application that is also mentioned on our wiki pages and that is called IP server. It is really, really simple, but the IP server allows us to, um, let me see, go run IP server, wait, dot go. Yes, there we go. It th This little binary application can also be downloaded from our website. And just to give you an idea about the source for everything we are covering in this video, that's the page. This is our wiki page on uh, Skahoy Wiki, wikiskahoy.com, Blue Pill Manuals, Device Calls Articles, TCP Device Call. And there you can even see a link to the first video that I put out on this subject. So read all this stuff. And in the bottom of this page, this is where we are actually covering the material in, uh, or this is the material we are going to cover in this video. But it has a link to the TCP server right there. So click that one, you can download it. But now I'm just running it from my web browser or from my uh, development environment here on some port that we need to specify. So um, that's the port. It's now ready to accept connections. Let us check. I open terminal. I type in NC localhost, which actually we are going to use the IP address of my network. So let's just check this IP address. All right. So like that. And then the port we just had like this. So if I type hello, if I send that off to the IP server I'm connected to, you see this string is arriving down here. I could even answer back. So I'll, I'll just do that. You see it, it pops up here. So now we have a TCP client connected to the TCP server and the TCP server can even answer back to us. So that should and, and that server could be your Rustalk 
device or something else that has a TCP connection where you want to send over strings to execute actions. Um, QSC, uh, AV installations. Uh, there are so many places where you have a TCP server or a client, but in this case servers that you want to send stuff to. And if you want to do that in an arbitrary way, this is what we are covering in this video. Now, uh, let's go up here because we need to set up the TCP device call inside of Reactor on the blue pill. We will type in the IP address I just found for my computer. That's the one. And then we'll use the server port number here. We could now choose an initialization command. It could be hello, but it should make sense in the context, of course. And we could also have a ping command, which is in case you want to have a sort of keep a live, a live signal. Let's save that. And then in a moment, you'll see it says connected. And that's awesome. So we'll, we'll just go over here. And then you can see that as it connected, we, because here we have that connection, it actually sent hello as the string. And now every 3000 milliseconds, I received the ping exclamation mark message. Now, this is where we'll see messages coming when we have the fader moving. And if you follow the Wiki article on all the first points up here, you would also have some idea about how to just send a single string. So let's go back here and look at configuration because now we want to explore that part of it. So um, ah, actually that was a little bit too quick because we need to add our panel. I have this dummy panel I was talking about, which is now in sleep mode once again. And it's, it's here, we wanna add that panel and we could either add it manually or we can discover the panels. So if I press discover, you see that it's actually finding my fake wave board, my emulated wave board on the network. I know it's the emulated one because it has my laptop's uh, IP and port and the serial number here is also revealing it. So I'll just select this guy, but notice what happens over here on the panel. It's actually, oh, it changed. There's something happening up here and that is because as BluePell connected to my emulated panel, it would uh, pick a configuration for generic audio control, which is what it usually does. But we'll remove this configuration topic, absolutely clean slate for this video and then go to the configuration tab. Now in here, if we, uh, let's just reload this page. We see in this view, this is the wave board. So now we can basically click any of these elements and then we would be able to, um, to assign configurations to it. Let me see, this is not relevant for us because this is managing the blue pill, but down here we, uh, we could, or uh, maybe we should create a child layer. Let's do that. So we'll just do that for the wave board like this and um, just submit. Okay, so here we have this layer wave board. And if I click this button, you see that it suggests that I should create a behavior on the layer wave board and I press the button to accept it. I will now choose a parameter for this button and by pressing edit, you get into this selector where you can select parameters like a device core, for instance, we'll select this one and then we will scroll to the cowboy trigger at the end and then we could type in a command like, hey, and then submit. And uh, that means if we press this button here, the cowboy trigger, as we do that, let's do it just three times. We can go over to the IP server and see that actually we sent this string three times over to that one. Now, that was just to kind of prove the point of what this TCP device core does. And what we want to do now as the next thing is to add actions for the faders and so on. Now, um, there's a thing that we want to do here and that is to, uh, let me see, create a master behavior. And we will create one called fader volume. So what I did, I, I pressed the layer here and then you get this layer inspector over here. No, wait, I was starting to create a variable. We'll not do that. We'll create a master behavior and uh, just create that. So it has created one called uh, fader volume and we'll create another one called encoder volume or encoder uh, volume because I'm assuming I'm sending some volume commands and we'll create this guy as well. Now we are not getting around managing or manipulating the, um, the the JSON underlying JSON structure of the configuration. So this might freak out some of you people, uh, probably some of this already did. Don't worry about it. 
The home screen is the entry point of working with Skyhoy Blue Pill products. This is where you easily select configurations like for a waveboard, you would just pick generic audio control and then you would have a really nice selector where you could add channels for different devices and so on. This is a masterclass. So this is where you get freaked out by, you know, by your own free will. And that's that's what I'm excited about teaching you. So in, in this case, what I want to show you is that the UI that has created some master behaviors that we can reuse multiple times is actually editing an underlying JSON file. And if I press this button, edit raw, I will see that JSON file. So in here, uh, let me see what, what are we having? We're having um, a layer structure. There's the, the name of the layer here. There's the so-called key map that is mapping the alias X1 to a specific panel, namely panel number two, ID number two, and hardware component number one. That's what this one means. Then we have some layers. We have a layer called Waveboard. That's the layer that I just created, right? And then we have another layer, which is apparently managing a blue pill configuration. Let's just ignore that one. So an easy way to do that would be clicking here so we don't see it too much. Now, the Waveboard layer has two master behaviors, encoder volume and fader volume. And then you also see that we have behaviors defined for X1, the button, and that was the one that used the cowboy style device, um, sorry, parameter from the, the protocol TCP device core, and it has as a meta value the hey string to be sent over with the cowboy style trigger using, by the way, a master behavior, a parent uh, master behavior called Skyhoy trigger. So some of this will actually be used up here. Now we are entering a point where we will uh, almost do the copy paste. Um, let's just shut this down. I guess we can just close it here. And then uh, I want to create an action for the fader because that's going to be, no, wait. Yes, I will. So I will basically say, no, 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 no. I will first edit the JSON. And there's a good reason for that. Okay, so I'll just go back in here. Sorry for that little confusion. And now we are going to steal from the Wiki page from Skahoy, but that's totally okay. So volume fader, or fader volume, I can't remember the order. We just copy this code. This is a master behavior that will forward the position of a fader in an arbitrary interval. That is from zero to 100. Um, actually, this is the first one that is being suggested to us. So let's just copy this, this guy. Okay, so we'll copy this over and put in here. And with JSON, you really need to observe the um, the end, all the commas and so on. We can format the code to have it a little bit nicer. But now we have something called volume fader here. And let's just uh, save this, save this current file. And we will go back here, probably need to reload. And we'll see that the, um, the master behavior is now called volume fader because that's the one that we have just defined in here. Now, this master behavior includes a few things. It has so-called constant definitions, channel and device ID. Then it has a event handler. The name is trigger. It could be anything, actually. This is a free choice. And it accepts binary input, meaning buttons. But it will also, um, it will also convert any analog input, that's what the A is for, to a binary input by saying, anytime you move a fader, I'm going to send an uh, act down. Act down means um, like like a trigger, you, you press the button. So we actually get activated every single time you start moving the fader. And when you get activated, we are going to use this, the cowboy style parameter from the protocol TCP we are even going to use a, um, a constant device ID. That device ID constant is coming from right here. So in other words, and you'll see it in a moment, we have now two parameters to define for this. And the one parameter is going in here to identify the device we are talking to. And the other parameter is, where's that? Down, 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 down. The channel, the channel, the channel. The channel is right here. It is actually being used as parameter number one. Okay, let's just see this work and then we can get back to explaining the whole thing. So save current file. And as we have now done that, I would like to get back to the thing that I was trying before, namely picking this one, saying on the root layer, no, I don't want that. I want to create it on the waveboard layer, okay? I want to create a behavior. Yes, please. That sounds like a great thing to do. So I'll do that. Now in this list, this is all your master behaviors. And one of these is going to be the volume fader. There you go. So we'll just pick this. And notice what I get. 
I just, with that little chunk of JSON code, I defined a behavior in the system that is already using the cowboy trigger from the TCP device call. And it gives me two options, very easy to use, right? The channel, I'll just pick a value like 12 and the device ID, and that has to be one. It has to be one because, and let's just exit this field. I'll, ex I'll tell you why. It has to be one because the device ID is one. The device ID is shown right there. By the way, it's not shown if you have not set show advanced to. So you need to know the device ID is this. You can also see it if you go in here, it's this number here. But that is, why, what is that for? That is if you have multiple TCP devices, then you would just add another device uh, and you could have device number two, three, four, and so on. So this is why where we assign the commands, we also need to always have the device ID as a part of that mix. Now, moving that fader will actually send commands over to uh, to the um, to the device. So let's just prepare for testing that and have this window over here and then have our simulation window open as well. So let's go to the simulator. Let's first check this guy. Okay, still works. And now we can pull this one. And what you see is that we are sending over a string where the position of the fader is inserted right here. Isn't that great? That's exactly what we want to do. Okay, so I was just briefly mentioning that inside here in this configuration code, um, no, wait, on the second position here, there is a, a variant of this one that will send over values from zero to 100 instead. Because what you noticed in the first code is that it's going to send over the, the full range. And uh, let me just explain that to you. Inside the JSON code right here in the editor, let's look again at what it is we're getting. I was mentioning that we, um, if, if we look at this one down here, the IO reference, that's what we want to look at. This is the reference to the parameter we are affecting as we are moving the fader, as we are receiving triggers. And the triggers we are receiving are basically binary, but when they are coming from a fader, we are converting them to binary pulses like, like button presses. And we are doing that anytime you move a fader. That's what this advanced code tells you. Okay. And when we get such a binary trigger, this IO reference is activated. We are basically triggering this one. In other words, this parameter, the cowboy style parameter, is being used with the device ID that we inserted as a constant that was defined up here, and it's got it got added. <laughs> you, we can see that now because you can see that the behavior we defined for the fader for fader number one is using as a parent ID volume fader. This is a reference to the master behavior defined right there. Okay, so it's using all that code. And then it is overriding the values of the constants with the value 12 for the channel and one for the device ID. And then uh, you can see that the device ID was the one inserted right here. That makes sense. And the channel is being inserted here as parameter number one. And parameter number one is being inserted right here with this little placeholder as a decimal value. And over here as a full integer value with a not, not a byte, this is only up to a byte, but this is like a full 32 bit integer. That 32 bit integer value is coming from P2 and P2 is getting the value from the analog component position. And that is always a value between zero and 1000 in the raw panel universe that we're using. So mm, that was an explanation of what is going on here. So obviously there's a lot of things that you could search up and get details on, but I hope that this makes sense to you as how this JSON code is uh, working for the fader we are moving. So if we look at what was being changed in the second proposal, that is, if you are not just wanting a value from one, you know, zero to 1000, you could also choose this code instead that is going to give you a different value range. And uh, what that is doing is it's defining a local variable only for that fader. That variable is called fader value, and uh, it has a min and a max range from zero to 100. We also have the same constant definitions. We are though defining an IO reference to the variable fader value. In other words, that variable that we just created inside the behavior. And then our event handlers are basically accepting also binary triggers with the same event pre-processing as we just did our conversion of triggers. And then the IO reference looks like this. So let's just check this. It is not using the direct 
value, the raw panel value of the fader. No, no, it's using the value of the variable. And because we are associating the variable with this change, then the, um, the, uh, the, the value will range between 0 and 100, like right here. Uh, I should actually say that this one is basing itself on a master behavior called Skahoy motorized or fader motorized. So the reason why this IO reference here is going to be manipulated without you know, further code that documents it is because it's hidden inside of here. So in other words, adding the variable, the constant definitions, the event handler, the extra event handler called forward is actually something we put on top of this master behavior right here. I somewhat feel this is more than we can cover in this video, but I just want to, to show you that here is actually code that would work if you need a different value range than zero to 1000. Then finally, we have this one called volume up down, and that one is a master behavior designed for encoders. So let's just be adventurous and take this over uh, pretty quickly. So now we have already had some experience in adding a master behavior. So maybe it would be kind of easy for us to just add it here. Uh, let's make sure that we have the comma right and all that stuff. So we need that comma right here. Let's format the code. Yes, that seems to work just fine. And we'll save this current file. Great, let's go back here. By the way, if you mess up the JSON, then there's going to be a problem in your tree. So you better be a little bit of a master. Uh, probably it's by the time you watch this video, somebody fixed that, of course, so that you can't save fake uh, or wrong JSON. But those validations are improving all the time. I want to now click the encoder up here and then say, yes, on my waveboard layer, I want to create this behavior and then see if we can find one like something volume up down. That's the one that I wanted to have. Now, once again, the volume up down command, uh, let's see, we probably have it over here. Uh, let's just take a quick look at, no, I think that would then have been a different uh, volume up down. There we have it. We also have constant definitions here that allows us to type in the channel and the device ID. We have event handlers. Let's see. Yeah, we have an event handler called down. So what that does is, again, it accepts binary triggers. But if we have pulsed triggers, like coming from an encoder, we turn it the one way and the other way, and that is uh, pulses, then if we have a pulse that has a negative polarity, we are outputting a a, um, a standard act down, but with the left edge, um, left edge indication on the trigger. And then we are, so now we have a binary trigger coming back from the event processor, which, and we are filtering that on the left edge. So when we are, in other words, when we are turning the encoder counterclockwise, we will get this one activated, this IO reference, which is just like before, a reference to the device core, to the device ID, and the cowboy style parameter. We are sending this one called channel so-and-so down, and we're doing that every single time that we have such a trigger arriving. The, the, the first parameter, the, the D1 that we're inserting, is coming from the constant channel. Then we have an absolutely similar trigger called up. It also accepts binary, but it's, it's taking positive edges on the encoder, so we turn it, it clockwise, it gives us a right edge coming out. We filter on that right edge, and then we have the same thing here, but we are now sending the command channel up. And then finally, we have a little bit of feedback so that we have a nice channel, channel name, volume, up, down, and so on here. And then we also have some, some feedback for, for the light intensity of the background LED. So that's, that's what we see in these. I would like to then get back here and uh, actually draw your attention to the fact that we are seeing exactly that, are we not? Uh, whoop. There, we, there we go. In the emulator here, we can see channel. It says none, all, but what if I type something in? So let's just pick channel 45. So channel 45, it's going to pop up here. We need the device ID number one. Thank you. And we're actually ready to test now. Um, we can we can actually test inside here. You don't need to actually have this external panel, but you can see our simulated panel over here. The emulated panel is also available. We can do it either way. You can do it from within Reactor. You can use a real external panel, which of course is the eventual point of using Skyhawk products, that is physical hardware panels. But as we are now pressing the uh, these arrows on the emulation, you can see every time we turn the encoder to the left and to the right, 
we get the channel 45 up and down commands sent over to our server. We can pull the motorized fader, we can do this as much as we want, and we can also do it inside of Reactor. Here we have similar way to, to actually exercise these things. So thank you guys for watching this video. I hope it was helpful and, and um, an inspiration to you to uh, learn some more about the underlying amazing structure of Reactor and how we can make configurations for any Skyhoy panel any raw panel device actually uh, in this environment.